Right, so we're gonna test the DC leakage on my installation. That's coming up with like 25, 28 milliamps. I wasn't expecting it to be that high. That's really dangerous. There's a hidden danger lurking in our installations, one that most electricians don't even test for. And the shocking part, it's already in our homes, our offices, and even in the devices we use every day. We're talking about DC leakage, and if you're not checking for it, why not? Because trust me, it can lead to faults you'll never see coming. Now, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Are you already testing for DC leakage? Do you think we should be building it into our routinely checks? Let's get that conversation going and stick around because a little later, I'll be diving into the guidance to see if we're actually required to test for it. <laughs> In the regs, there's no neat little definition for earth leakage current. Instead, it's wrapped up under something called protective conductor current. That's basically any electrical current that shows up in a protective conductor, whether it's from an insulation fault or just a byproduct from normal operation. Leakage current can sneak in through damaged insulation, faulty kit, or even through perfectly healthy electronic equipment. And in most electronic circuits, the culprit is the power supply. Inside, you'll usually find capacitors that filter out transients, those short bursts of energy that could otherwise damage the electronics. But the way those capacitors are connected means they create a path to earth, and that's exactly where the leakage current flows. DC leakage has always been a problem. We've known for years that electronic devices dump current into the protective conductor. That's why in big offices full of computers, we'd often run a secondary protective conductor to deal with all that stray current. But that was mostly commercial buildings, and many of those didn't even have RCD protection back then, because the worry was constant nuisance tripping. But nuisance tripping wasn't the real enemy. The real issue sits deep inside the RCD itself, because the current we're talking about here isn't your standard AC leakage. It's DC leakage current. And where does that DC leakage come from? Well, a lot of it is produced by power electronics. Think solar inverters, washing machines, or LED lighting. But here's the catch. Just because it's a machine with electronics doesn't guarantee it'll produce DC leakage. Not all LED lighting will leak. An LED lamp, for example, has no connection to earth, so it simply can't. Look out for the telltale signs like the word inverter drive. The safest bet? Always check the manufacturer's data sheet. And here's one to watch right now heat pumps. Most use inverter drives and manufacturers will make specific recommendations for the RCD type. The problem is those details often get missed by plumbers during installation. So if you're working on a property with a heat pump, it's well worth clamping up and checking the DC leakage for yourself. So while AC leakage might just give you those occasional nuisance trips, DC leakage can go a step further. Not only can it cause nuisance tripping on its own, it also has the power to completely blind an RCD. It saturates the core, masks the fault, and suddenly that protective device you've trusted for decades isn't protecting at all. If you want to dig even deeper into DC leakage, Joe Robinson's done a brilliant video breaking all of this down. I've left links in the description. So if DC current is such a big problem, are we actually required to test for it? So let's turn to guidance note three, figure 2.12, the sequence of testing. You won't see earth leakage testing mentioned anywhere in there, but that's not really surprising. The sequence is designed for new installations. At that stage, the system hasn't even been energized, so there wouldn't be a DC leakage to find, would there? Now, when we move into chapter three of guidance note three, periodic inspection and testing, the very first paragraph always grabs my attention. The purpose of periodic inspection and testing is to provide an engineering view on whether or not an installation is in a satisfactory condition where it can continue to be used safely. But here's the question. We know DC leakage can blind a type AC RCD and interfere with how it operates. So if we're not checking for DC leakage, can we really say we're given that engineering view on the safety of the installation? So I headed straight over to section 3.10.2, tests to be made. This sets out the guidance on what tests are appropriate during a periodic inspection. And once again, there's no mention of DC leakage 
testing. In fact, the only place leakage testing gets a mention at all is tucked away in Appendix C, where it talks about using an earth leakage clamp meter simply as an indication of the state of the insulation and no mention if it's AC leakage or DC. So is the guidance really suggesting that this isn't such a big deal? After all, DC current would only have to be present at the circuit at the exact moment an earth fault occurs and the RCD is expected to trip. Are we blowing this out of proportion? Well, I keep coming back to that phrase, making an engineering judgment. And for me, that means I'll be testing for DC current. Why wouldn't I? It's quick, it's simple, and for peace of mind, why take the risk? So here I'm using the TIS 570 clamp meter. It measures both AC and DC leakage current, but in this case, I'm only interested in the DC. So let's do the DC on my home. It's coming up with like 30 milliamps. That's really high. Well, this property has an inverter, an EV on charge, washing machines, and of course, the usual day-to-day -day appliances, all contributing their share. Now let's think about how that plays out on the board. On a modern split load board, you could have multiple circuits sharing the protection of just one type AC RCD. That means the combined leakage from every appliance on those circuits is stacking up on that single device. Now let's put some numbers to it. Say the upstairs ring final is leaking six milliamps DC, the downstairs ring is leaking two milliamps DC, and the kitchen circuit is leaking four milliamps DC. Add those together and you're already at 12 milliamps of DC leakage, all flowing through that type AC RCD. That amount of DC leakage is enough to start blinding the device, interfering with its ability to trip under fault conditions. So while each circuit on its own might look acceptable, that combined effect can leave the whole installation vulnerable. Now compare that with an all RCBO board. The same figures still apply. 6 milliamp DC on the upstairs ring, 2 milliamp DC on the downstairs ring, and 4 milliamp DC DC on the kitchen. But instead of all of that leakage stacking up on one device, each circuit has its own type A RCBO. So yes, my upstairs ring has 6 milliamp DC of leakage, but that's within the capability of a type A RCBO. The downstairs with 2 milliamp DC and the kitchen with 4 milliamp DC are also well within range. The important difference is that no single device is carrying the combined total. Each RCBO only sees the leakage from its own circuit. That said, if I see 6 milliamp DC on a single circuit, even though it is within the rating, I would still be digging deeper. We are right at the top end of what the device is designed to handle, and as professionals, it's always worth investigating further. Just like on my installation at home, I'm testing on my main tails and getting between 25 and 30 milliamp DC. That is a combination of all of the circuits in my installation. So what I can now do is use the TIS 570 on each individual circuit to see where that DC leakage current is coming from. So while the guidance isn't crystal clear, the issue is, as professionals, we mitigate risk. And if we're not testing for DC leakage, is that a risk we're willing to take? I'll be testing for DC leakage and recording it on my EICRs, and with the TIS 570, it's straightforward. But what do you think? Is it belts and braces or a battery in the loft incident waiting to happen? Drop your thoughts in the comments or email me at willittrip at efix.co.uk. And if you want to find out more about RCD types, then hit the video link on screen now.